What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? On Valentine's Day, this is what you decide to do. It's the one day a year I get to take care of myself. In the dark? I can see perfectly fine in the dark. Well, you know, on that note, this week's video is about learning how to paint fur on legs. I don't see how that has any correlation to what I'm doing. So there's something that I wanted to talk about really fast before I got into this week's video, and that is that I have not been doing this very long. I got a 3D printer about two years ago and I started printing stuff for D&D, and I only really started painting things within the last year. You know, I got my first set of Space Marines and things like that to, to paint, and you know, I've just been printing other things that I've printed, painting other things that I've printed uh, with my 3D printers. and. I have not been doing it that long. And when I do these videos, it's generally after trying something one or two times. My non-metallic metal video, that was the second time that I had done non-metallic metal. Wow. That was the second time that I had done non-metallic metal. Fixing the back of this ogre or this hill giant with clay and aluminum foil. That was the first time that I had done anything like that. And what I'm trying to get across is that these things aren't hard. You know, painting, painting really well takes practice. That, I mean, the bottom line, that's what it is. I don't paint super well yet, but I'm practicing more and more and more and more. And I really like that part of it. And so as I'm learning these new things, as I'm learning these new skills, I want to share them. I want to show them to you so that you can see that it's not something that's super hard to do. My first attempt with painting fur, I have an orc that has a big cloak on and the top of its fur and that was my first attempt and I did that with a dry brush I painted it while uh, you know just a basic dark brown and then with a light brown I went over the top and dry brushed it which you can do and it's a, it's probably the easiest way to do fur but in my mind it doesn't look as good as the method I'm going to show you today so here's how I feel fur looks the best and keep in mind this is my second maybe third time doing fur and so am I going to find a better way to do it? I hope so. And when I do, I'll share that with you. Okay, so this is the Lady of the Grove model. And as you can see, her lower half is fawn legs or satyr legs, whatever you want to call them. And they're covered in fur. So we got to paint them with fur. So to get the color, what I did is I went from the skin color, which is purple, and her hair, which is a blue. And I wanted to get kind of a combination for her legs. And so I put those two colors together right here. And we just have to mix them together. And I'm hoping we get a deeper blue color um, that we can use for the fur on her legs. So mix it up. I know some of you use the, the butt of your brush to do that. I use the tip because I am not a very intelligent individual, but I like the color. I like the way that it turned out and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get some gradients of that color. So I'm going to mix some white in so that I can get a lighter version of this color because we want the fur that's going to be in the light to be lighter. And uh, just to kind of look separate from the darker fur. And we also want to do the same thing for the dark areas of the fur. So we're going to get some black and mix that in with this color as well. And now we got our three colors that we're going to need to start with this. Then once you have your colors mixed and ready to go, take that main color, that core color that you're going to be using and paint anything that has fur with that color. Now, if you wanted to, could you make the, the dark areas use the dark color right now and the light areas the light color right now? Yeah, of course you could. Um, I prefer to do it all in one color first. That way, when we go back and do it, all we have to do is kind of an edge highlight with those other colors, a highlight with the lighter color and the darker color. <clears throat> the, the beauty in doing it that way is that once you have that lighter color or that darker color, all you have to do is paint it over kind of the top surfaces. And then the dark surfaces or the cracks beneath that, that main color is already gonna be there because that's where you put it. And so for the lighter areas, it'll look dark underneath and light on top, which is exactly what you want. And for the dark areas, well, the dark areas are 
naturally darker just because of shades and things like that and so generally you don't have to worry about it too much in there um, and so I like to just do the whole thing in one go and then come back and do my highlights and my lowlights. Um, something to kind of take note and I didn't do a super good job of it on this uh, but generally when you're painting you want to paint in the direction of the fur so if the fur is you know downwards you want to kind of paint with a downward motion it just makes it look a little better. Now that the base layer has had some time to dry we're just going to come back and we're going to use our, our lighter color and we're going to hit those areas that have been on the surface and we're going to try and go with the grain of the hair as much as we can. <clears throat> if you can use the side of your brush and just hit the stuff that's elevated go ahead and do that. Sometimes you can't so just do your best to get that hair like I said and get those top surfaces. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll dry and <clears throat> if you don't like how it looks well you got the base coat, just go back over it with the base coat and hit that and do it again. One of the things that I do want to say <clears throat> with doing the light color, I used to be super cautious about how light I went and I got, I would get super nervous about going too light. The funny thing is, um, one of the things I learned, and I think I learned it from actually from Ninjon's channel, is that it doesn't matter if it's too light. Even if you do it and it's super light and you just hate how it turns out, <clears throat> one of the beauties of painting and doing highlights is that if you put a wash right over the top of that, even if you hate how it turned out, that wash is going to just bring it down, you know, four or five notches. And so even if you hate how it looks because it's too bright, keep going. Keep going and then do a wash on it. And then if you hate it, go ahead and start over. But for the time being, don't worry about it too much. Just go through, have some fun, try to experiment with it a little bit. Sometimes it's not going to look perfect. It's not going to look the way you want. But when you're done and you can kind of look at it, you can see the, the dark fur beneath the light fur. And if it's not enough and you want to go a little lighter, do a third coat. Do a third coat where you do certain areas just a little bit brighter than the other ones but from here you're just going to do the same thing that you did before with that lighter color and you're going to move over i'm gonna clean off my brush don't judge me and uh, you're going to get your darker color come back and we're going to do the same thing we're going to do the same thing in these dark areas and here i'm going to do uh, i'm going to do a little bit more because you know, I'm not going to be as delicate as I was because this fur altogether is going to be dark. You want that nice separation, especially of where the light is going to be so that people can kind of see that when they look at it and they can see the difference. And if you just kind of hold it up under the light, you can see these areas that are darker. You know, and if the light is coming from above, which it generally is, you'll know which areas to keep a little darker and sometimes you'll hit stuff that you highlighted previously and that's okay because when everything is said and done you now have those three degrees of dark medium and light which makes the fur look and feel a lot more real and that's it fur is really easy to paint and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks pretty good once you do that. Like I said, you can always add a wash to it. If I had a blue wash or something like that, I could add that on there. But I actually am really happy with how it turned out. And so I'm just going to leave it the way that it is. Um, one other thing that you can do that I didn't talk about is down at the bottom, you can make it lighter. You can make it darker depending on, you know, is the creature walking in mud? Is the hooves, are they worn down so that the hair is a little lighter down at the bottom? different things like that. So there's different options, uh, but overall, quick, easy way to paint fur. And honestly, that's all there is to it. It's it's super easy. It's an easy process. Obviously, this model is a little bigger than most, but it's almost easier to do it when it's smaller because then you just use the tip of your brush and you just highlight, go with the course of the fur, and it looks great. And that's it. 
fur is not hard. Fur is one of those things that I was super intimidated with in the beginning, but there are so many things like that in painting that you just got to get out there and try. And I promise this, this way in my mind looks better than the dry brushing way. Uh, the dry brushing way is easier and faster. So if you're doing a lot, you might want to do that. But if you want it to look really good, this is the way to do that. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for coming along with us while we learn our craft a little bit more. And I hope that you keep coming back. I hope that you want to learn these things as I'm learning them and that together we can make your tabletop experience the best that it can be. You know, as always, if you want to subscribe or like the channel, leave a comment below. Let us know what we're doing right. Let us know what you would like to see more of. Let us know if there's anything in painting that you're afraid of or that you were afraid of, but you aren't now and it ended up being a lot easier than you thought it was. I mean, the big one for me was non-metallic metal and I did a video about that. Then there was fur and I just did a video about that. So we'll see what we jump to next. Maybe faces. I suck at faces. <laughs> so stick around and join us while we do that. As always, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us here at Pulsegate Games. And don't spend so much time making your world that you forget to spend some time in it. Until next time.